Hello, good evening, everybody. Uh, welcome to another beautiful day. And this is another edition of the EB2 National Interest Waiver Green Card. Uh, doing it yourself. Of course, yes, we are doing it ourselves. And a lot of people are doing it themselves. And they are taking charge of their immigration applications. And that is what this channel hopes to say. We are serving people, giving people ideas, giving people tips, giving people strategies to be able to apply for their own green card through the national interest waiver uh, without any lawyer, especially those that cannot afford lawyer. So that is what we are doing. My name is Daniel Aniniba, and I'm your host for this show. I'm your host for this program. And we have done a lot of episodes. And this is our episode 5B, which is letters of recommendation samples. Last week, we looked at a whole lot of structure of a letter of recommendation. So we are going to go into that. So without wasting, wasting much time, uh, we are going to go straight uh, into uh, today's agenda. And today's agenda is uh, episode 5B, like I said, uh, sample letter of recommendations. Okay, so this is what this episode is going to be like. And please, if you have not subscribed, I would advise that you subscribe to this channel because there are a lot of great, great ideas, great, interesting techniques that we have been sharing. So if you are not subscribed, please hit the subscription button and subscribe so that you can always get an episode uh, or, or get alerts whenever we release a new episode. Wow, so what a week. The week has been very hectic and very tough and very overwhelming. Uh, so, but still, we know that we have an obligation to save our viewers so we cannot actually uh, 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 fill our promises. So we have to still keep bringing this episode. And we also say thank you to all that are appreciating this channel, to everybody that is relying heavily on this channel, for those that send comments of encouraging of encouragement, comments showing that we are really, really helping them in any corner of the world that they find themselves. Uh, we really appreciate your comments and it's going to motivate us to bring us more series and more content so far as EB2 National Interest Waiver is concerned. So let's look at what we did last week. For last week, uh, sorry, last week was episode 5A. Uh, it's supposed to be 5A. For last week, what we were looking at was like uh, letters of recommendation structure. So what is a typical structure of a letter of recommendation? What should it look like? How should you arrange stuff? What goes into it? And even when we say dependent versus independent, what is this kind of, uh, what's a dependent recommendation letter and independent recommendation letter? What is a subjective and an objective letter of recommendation? All these things we talked about it, and even how to collect your recommendation letters. Uh, how should you collect all of them in one geographical area from one country? No, that would be a red flag. That is, in fact, uh, a recipe for disaster. So uh, you want to spread your recommendation letters across. I, I don't care if all your recommendation letters is being taken from Africa, but different countries, OK? Don't limit yourself to just one country, OK? Just don't limit yourself to one country. Spread it across countries, across continents, if you, have, if you can. And also make sure that you get samples from the United States, because this is where you are looking to immigrate to or to migrate to. So make sure that you also get a letter of recommendation from the United States, especially more from the United States. And we also look at uh, how, how many should you even collect? And I mentioned the five eights rule, like a minimum of five and a maximum of eight should be okay. Okay, so don't be taking too little, too few, or let don't take more recommendation letters. So just stay within this range and you're just going to be fine. So that is what we did. And that was very interesting. So if you have not watched, please go back to our previous episodes. This is a whole training on its own. And like I said, we are putting people through training step-by-step -step approach of filing their own national interest with a green card. At times, people are very much misled. They think that this green card is just about filling of government forms and printing supporting documents and mailing it to USCIS. That is totally wrong. There's a whole lot of petition you are drafting. There's a whole lot of convincing work you'll be doing. So you're convincing people through drafting of a petition and putting in exhibits and showing evidence that in fact, you qualify for this type of green card but you are not getting it because you are not getting an employer filing for you, but you really qualify. So this is how you are going to draft your petition. And that is what we are, the training we are giving to our audience, to our viewers. 
that they will be able to follow these trainings and draft their own uh, petition letter and if possible, their own letter of recommendation, in fact, powerful letters of recommendation. So that is what we did last week. Like, before we go to this week, like I always do, I always want to have a fun time with our Q&A, and we are going to have just this few uh, things to talk about on the Q&A. So somebody asked this one, must recommendation letter be on a letterhead? Uh, thank you very much. This is coming from Derek, Derek in Tennessee. Derek said that must recommendation letter be on letterhead. You see, uh, I always say that there is no straight rules from USCIS, which says that your recommendation letter has to be on letterhead. Uh, there's no rule as such. But uh, if you want to present yourself good, if you can get it on letterhead, it's good. It's perfect. Uh, if you don't get it on letterhead, it's fine. Okay, you're not going to be penalized for it. But if it's on a letterhead, to me, in my opinion, that's very subjective. It makes it more official and uh, uh, a kind of more business-like, okay? So uh, try if you can get it on a letterhead. If they are not getting it on a letterhead, it's also equally okay, all right? So no problem with that. Now, the next question is, is it mandatory to file I I-485, you mean the adjustment of status, for applicants applying from outside the US who will be going through consular processing? Uh, so this is coming from Harun. So Harun, uh, if you look at my first videos, the terms, terminologies that I did, uh, on national interest waiver, I clarified all these issues. And I said that adjustment of status is for people who already reside in the United States on any type of status, whether they are on a visitor visa, whether they are on a uh, student visa, whether you're on an H-1B uh, employment visa. So whatever your visa status you are currently in the United States, if you have filed this thing, then you will have to apply for the I-485 adjustment of status, whether concurrently or after your petition is approved. And so, so for I-485, it doesn't apply to people who are outside the United States. If you're outside the United States, you're only going to file your petition and after it's approved, you go to the National Visa Center, NVC, and NVC will schedule your appointment with your home embassy and you're going to book a consular appointment and go through your visa interview to officially arrive at the United States as an immigrant. Okay, so that is the process if you are outside the United States. So, and the last person said, uh, please keep posting this kind of videos as they are very helpful for someone looking to rely on themselves without a lawyer. This is coming from Ahmed. Ahmed, thank you very much. Such encouraging and motivating words from you like this are able to keep us going. I know that the schedules are tough. Uh, America, the pressures are huge. The stress is huge, but we will do our best to keep bringing content, educative content like this, and keep our training ongoing to the latter part of it. And in case you don't know, this training is not going to end at chapter five after we are done with all the application filing questions. After this training, we are going to look at uh, the BIA uh, reviews. You know that when people file green card and it gets denied, they go through the BIA review, they file an appeal. So the BIA gives reasons why their green cards were denied. And we'll go through some of these reports and I'm going to kind of punch holes into some of these things or comments from the BIA, that's the Board of Immigration uh, Appeals, uh, the comments they pass on specific national interest waiver applicants and what they fail to achieve or what they fail to show. And you will know that all that they brought about at time is the applicant failing to document advanced degree, at time is the applicant failing to document the required experience, at time the applicant even failing to properly document the national importance or the intrinsic merit. So after this whole series is completed, we are going to go through the BIA reviews and we are going to, I will take every review, every report, and I will kind of just oppose it to whatever training we have been doing to see where those applicants were falling short that caused their denials. So stay tuned to this channel. It's going to be a whole interesting power packed program that we'll be doing. So that is just by the way. Yes. So there's, there's this particular uh, recommendation letter I want to begin with. Uh, so let us start with this. Of course, with a this letter of recommendation was coming from somebody who uh, worked hand in hand with the applicants uh, as, as, as a librarian, okay, as a library professional for helping certain academic journals for people, uh, master students research. So uh, this was a kind of, well, some would say it's dependent, some would say it's independent, but uh, it wasn't a direct supervision of the applicant's work, 
but this person somehow knew the applicant somehow. So let us look at this typical recommendation letter and we are going to look at it point by point and to be able to digest uh, and look at how this letter of recommendation was written and how it was presented to applicants. So of course you are going to put on your address, whatever it is. Uh, like I said, this person is a librarian, works at the Wallace Library of RIT. Uh, so that is it. Uh, there's nothing sensitive about that one. Uh, and of course, after your address or your date, you're also going to address the USCIS. Now, people always have problem with this session as to uh, whether typing the whole USCIS uh, address as in Texas or Nebraska, whatever center, or just addressing it to USCIS attention as I-140, is just enough, okay? This is a recommendation letter which is going to be part of your other documents in the whole postage. So you don't have to be too much detail with USS address. Uh, now, of course, the heading is going to be recommendation letter for Mr. So so and so. Yeah, of course. Uh, so I settled my name there. Uh, for national interest waiver green card. That is going to be your heading, as simple as that. Like I said, for variation sake, people, other people will decide to write it differently to make it different. Last episode, I said that you are going to write most of this recommendation letter yourself. So you will have to also exhibit some variations of your writing styles, your vocabularies, and other stuff. So take note of that. Now, of course, you want to address the visa officer. So dear adjudicating officer, or dear USCIS officer, or dear visa officer, whatever salutation you think that seems good for you or seems pleasant to your ear, you are liberty to use it, okay? And then you come to the first paragraph. Let's look at it. Is that a... I'm writing this reference letter to support Mr. Susan Su application for permanent residence in the United States in the EB2 National Interest River category. Okay. I am Dr. Blank, an expert in STEM education and research, and currently a chief library liaison at the College of Science at RIT USC. I hold a doctoral degree in executive leadership in STEM education with over 24 years of experience in library consultancy and academic information retrieval. Okay, the first paragraph, like I said, is about the recommender talking about his qualification to let the visa officer know that he, he or she is qualified to write a letter of recommendation for you. That is what mostly the first paragraph is dedicated for. Okay, then successive paragraphs are going to talk about any skills that you want the recommender to write about you, which you are going to use even to support parts of your petition. Because when we go next week into exceptional ability, which is Chapter three, we are going to need most of these quotes from commendation letters to support pass of the petition, okay? So the commendation letter is something that whenever you are writing, you have the end in mind. What do I need to be talked about? Uh, what is it about me that I want people to talk about that I can use to support my recommendation, uh, my petition, okay? So knowing the structure of your petition, where you need statements to support is going to guide you to share these statements to your recommenders. Okay, so that is the clue, that's the technique of writing recommendation letters. So let us look at it. The next paragraph said that I do not have a direct relationship with Mr. Aniniba. So it is very much important that if the person is projecting him or herself as an independent recommender for you, these statements are very much important. Okay, it shows that you are bringing some objectivity into the recommendation letter, letting the visa officer have an objective view that, oh, it's not a family member or a family or familiar relationship or a family friend who is writing this for you, but somebody who objectively knows about you and your work, okay? He says that, I don't know this applicant, but I'm privy to his skills and research attitude in the College of Science RIT. As a library liaison officer, my work is to mentor emerging and talented scientists in the College of Science on the various mechanism of treating scholarly works from academic database to broaden their knowledge in their perspective field. Through my work, I happen to work with Mr. Susan and Sue on retrieving academics articles or scholarly articles, which serve as foundation upon which he built his original research in RG bioremediation technology and biofuels. Okay, so this additional paragraph is still talking about how the recommender came to know you. It's very important that the recommender give his qualification or her qualification and also go ahead and talk about how he came to know you or she came to know you. This particular paragraph, somebody can also write in the form as, I knew this applicant when we happened to meet at a conference and he was presenting on a very uh, interesting research breakthrough that he has done. And I, I happened to know him, exchange contact with him. And that's how come I know by his work. Somebody can also write it in similar way like that, okay? So that is it. 
there are various ideas you can use to document the relationship of how the recommender came to know you. Now, the next paragraph is talking about, it says, Mr. Soso is so carried out innovative research under the mentorship of Dr. Somebody, who is one of RIT's distinguished professors in the field of algebra technology with many industrial partnerships. Mr. Anini used novel scientific methods to cultivate different strains of microalgae and apply them to different wastewater types for treatment, okay? So this sentence is particularly talking about a particular lab skill, okay? Which can support something in the session ability cat uh, category when we begin next week, chapter three, okay? So when you're documenting a session ability, you're going to talk about a whole lot of skills that you possess. And some of these statements, you can put them in quotes to support some of these arguments you make in your main petition. Okay, now he said that his research builds on scientific principle that microalgae can utilize pollutants in agricultural effluents for growth, thereby protecting surface waters from pollution and producing biomass for energy. His research has gathered support for many industries in and out of states, especially synergy and CH4 biogas, where his technology is being used to remediate both dairy and bio by biodigester waste, okay? Now, I want to take a moment to talk about this particular line, okay? His research has gathered support from many industries in and out of New York State, especially synergy and biogas. This statement can also support something under exceptional ability or even national interest as uh, your work is going to transfer technology. If you look at my episode one video that I did, I talk about technology transfer as a way of documenting exceptional ability. Uh, so, uh, uh, it wasn't uh, episode one, actually, it's like episode uh, two or so. Uh, so uh, if you look at it, this statement can also help to uh, support the fact that your research is going to transfer technology to some industries in the United States, okay, if it's applicable to you. So take note of that. It's also said that Kreha Family Farms, which is also into mass production of eggs for New York State, has also partnered with its lab to use microalgae to reduce nutrient loads in egg wash wastewater. Of course, whenever we produce the eggs, they have found produce egg, they produce wastewater because they have to wash these eggs to make it market, uh, to meet market standards. And this egg wash wastewater also needs to be treated. And of course, this same technology can be used to treat this egg wash wastewater. Okay. If I said that with a skill set, I can guarantee that the chronic toxic agar blooms disaster currently occurring on the coast of Florida can be ameliorated and public health be improved. The nation could harness its skills to channel and treat agricultural runoffs in open pond systems and harvest the biomass for biofuels, hence preventing wastewater from compromising freshwater sources. Now that kind of statement, this statement also can also support something in chapter four. Remember I talk about chapter four like the unbalanced statement. Uh, what risk that the US stand if they deny you that green card, okay? Uh, that is chapter four, uh, unbalanced, what risk, what effects, uh, what would the US lose if we don't allow this guy to come in as a permanent resident, okay? And some of these statements are very strong statements to convince the visa officer, because that's the last adjudicating point of your green card. And the visa officer would love to read some of these statements, all right? Now, you can see that in the recommendation letter, uh, there are some statements which are bolded. It's very important that you do this. Bolding certain, uh, certain statement you want to draw the visa officer's attention to, okay? <laughs> such because such statement may be strong and they may present your case even stronger. So let's look at it. He said, uh, let me emphasize that during the scholarly search on Mr. Ninibai's work, field of research last year, they assisted very scanty works in the field for which I encourage the United States to attain, retain talents of its kind to boost the field of algae remediation. So look at this bolding. Uh, if you look at this whole bolding uh, uh, sentence or statement that is made, this statement is going to support the fact that this applicant has very little citations. In fact, zero citations. And whenever at some point in your petition, you have to address why you have zero publications and zero citations. And uh, so you see that you, the person had the end goal in mind that I have to explain this thing at some point in my petition. Therefore, putting these statements there to use to support that is very important. You see, the USCIS officer doesn't trust much about what you have, whatever you are typing, as compared to what your recommenders are saying. Because the recommenders are experts in the field, okay? So if the expert in the field is saying that there's not much citation in this field, there's no much publication in this field, who is here to doubt it, okay? And that's the technique you use. If you have very little citation, 
find expert letters and put statements in to support some of these reasons. Because whatever you reason you give in your petition, the visa officer will just read it, maybe if he asked who, but will not actually receive it or would actually be convinced as when an expert is also providing a supporting statement to it. Okay, and this statement is particularly stronger to at that point when we read that point in the petition or in their training, you will see how these statements are going to come in to support that kind of low citation records. Okay, now an interesting part of his work is how he converts algae biomass harvested from treatment ponds into very useful products like bioethanol, biodiesel, and even biofertilizer. This innovation is in line with USDA, that means the United States Department of Agriculture, campaign for cleaner fuels as well as recycling nutrients back into the soil for crop use, okay? So if this even statement can still even support something in national importance and intrinsic merit, okay? So take note of that. Now look at another bold uh, statement. He said that from my expertise as a librarian whose work cut across journals and publications, the field of IG research is still at the rudimentary stage and publishing in the field might take some time as various methodologies need to be tried and tested over time before publishing to the wider scientific community, okay? This is also going to address the low publication and low citation aspect, okay? That is the weakness of this petition. The petitioner had very little to no publication and little to no citations, okay? And he needed statements to actually get around that. If not, it was going to be a straight denial. Uh, not straight denial, but if you don't convince the USS why you don't have publication or citations, which at time is, some of the things they base on to adjudicate some of this petition. Uh, if you don't come, then of course you are going to get denied. So you have to explain. And this is a good way, a creative way of explaining some of these things. So this statement will even go ahead also to support the reason why this petitioner have not published yet or have no citations yet. Okay. Now, moreover, Mr. Aninibas work directly falls under the memorandum of understanding between RIT and Synergy LLC which restricts him from free author publication due to company data confidentiality clause enshrined at RIT's code of ethics for research and publication copyright. The above stated reasons explain how, explain his low record of citation and publication, but I can guarantee higher downloads and citations when his work is finally gazetted and published to the wider scientific community. Okay, yeah, so uh, I would say that this recommend that you actually had that business of dealing with the low citation and publication uh, 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 issue or weakness, okay? He, that was the business for this recommender. He, he, she just wanted to address it. And as you can see from the whole recommendation letter, that's why like, it's good to at times share some of these things to the recommenders so that they can easily, uh, one recommender can actually focus on that because we needed the whole time of recommendation for this because she's the librarian, she's expert, and she deals with articles from this field. And she's saying this, who are you the visa officer to doubt it, okay? So uh, that is the skill, that is the technique you use when you don't have a lot of citations or publications to support your work or to support whatever professional. For those in the businesses and us, or even the professional fields, you don't even need to show citations or publication records, but for so somebody who was doing a master's or a purely academic environment like this, it was very germane that he actually give reasons why he didn't have publications or citation records. Okay, so uh, that is it for this recommendation letter. And if you look at it, uh, it's go it's anywhere between one and to two pages maximum, uh, which is uh, good and a standard recommendation letter, as you can see here. Okay, so this gives you a clue as to how a recommendation letter should be. Now let's go to recommender number two. Uh, I want us to quickly go into recommender number two and look at the kind of recommendation this person also wrote in support uh, of the applicants, okay? Now, this is also coming from a recommender who knows about the applicants work because they share the same laboratory space, but not necessarily doing the, in the same program or not necessarily in the same research field, okay? And like I said, this person was in the microbiology field and it was a very strong recommendation that this person also wrote to support the applicants. Let's go through it. Of course, it follows the format, you see. Uh, the first part, the recommender's address was at this part, okay? And this time around, I've shifted, it was shifted somewhere to middle or somewhere. That's one of the variations, okay? Uh, one of the styling that you can use to show that 
it's not one person that wrote this thing, but actually it was one person who wrote all these things and actually sit for endorsements. Okay, so that is the trick and some of the tips you can use. Of course, uh, the salutation comes and the heading comes. Letter recommendation for Mr. So so and so. Okay, uh, dear officer. The other one said that dear adjudicating officer. This one said just a dear officer. Okay, once again variations. Uh, I wish to use this medium to write a letter of recommendation to support Mr. So so and so petition for permanent residence in the United States with the UCI, USCIS. My name is Dr. Something, a senior faculty at RIT with over 23 years of teaching and research in the university. Okay, so this person was an inner circle. Okay, I'm not like to, uh, totally classified as independent. Uh, it was inner circle because we shared in the same laboratory space. Uh, so take note of that. Uh, I specialize in oral microbiology with publications in several scientific journals and receive several accolades for my role in minority student mentorship and motivation, okay? I currently serve as a program director for the biomedical science program at RIT, okay? So uh, this was a very uh, qualified high profile person who wrote this recommendation letter. Uh, now let's look at what he wrote. He said that I have no direct supervision once again, a statement which is trying to distance himself from a familiar relationship and rather showing objectivity here, okay? I have no direct supervision, neither have I worked directly with the applicant on his research. However, I am confident with his research prowess in the field of microalgae, culture and bioremediation, culture and bioremediation of industrial wastewater. I share the same laboratory space with the uh, social and so, and on countless times, I've observed how he utilized novel scientific methods Novel, the word novel is very important, uh, to reduce pollutant loads in various industrial ways through the application of green algae. We occasionally discuss and exchange scientific ideas and how our methods in microbiology complement each other for the general good of the environment. Okay. Now, notable among the skills he possesses is the ability to culture microalgae, the use of different agar plates to assay the various microbiological diversity in different wastewaters and extraction of oil and sugar from algae biomass after treatment through waste chemistry methods. Okay, so this statement is going to support exceptional ability. In your exceptional ability, you say that I possess the skill of extracting oils and sugar using waste chemistry. Then you will need some statements like this, quotes like this to support it in the main petition. Remember I said that supporting your petition with quotes make your petition stronger, okay? It makes it very strong. Uh, so take note of that. In my experience as a microbiologist, wastewater treatment plants have over the years solely relied on aerobic bacteria community for the biological treatment stage, and this might come with consequences. For instance, in a typical pharmaceutical wastewater treatment plant, antibiotics could easily pass on to microbes and will then cause them to develop genetic mutation and immunity to antimicrobial drugs at a faster rate. Hence, the applicant's technology could, for the first time, make microalgae the predominant organism in wastewater treatment plants to remove harmful compounds from wastewaters at the biological stage. All right. So this statement is also very strong, and it can even support uh, uh, something at the uh, at the chapter four, the harm that might come on the US if the applicant is denied green card. Okay. So if you deny the applicant green card, then we can even have genetic mutation, which will affect public health, okay? So it's also a very good statement in there. Now let's look at this. Mr. Social and So work is a significant contribution to a bigger industrial technological advancement by which RIT has signed partnership agreement with some medium to large US agro-industries like Synergy Dairy in Wyoming County and CA4 Biogas and Covington. Creha farms and others. So this statement will further support trans technology transfer to industries when we reach chapter three. Okay, so that is it. That's a strategy. Okay, to drafting a very powerful letter of recommendations. He said that his work investigates the ability of microalgae to remove pollutants from industrial and food waste from his from these companies. He used the novel scientific approach to culture microalgae, inoculate and monitor relevant parameters over time. The ability of a particular strain of algae to significantly reduce pollutants in agricultural effluence in relatively shorter residence time is the ultimate goal, okay? The project has recorded many successes as various species of algae have been tested and recommendations have been made to industries to try on a pilot scale, okay? 
So that is a very strong statement. And look at one bold statement we want to draw the visa officer attention to. He said that I want to emphasize that Synergy Dairy and CH4 Biogas has adopted and begun to implement the applicant's technology for which this continuous presence in the United States will be required for an overhaul to make the project a success. Okay, a chapter four statement. Okay, this is going to be a chapter four statement. On balance, should we allow the applicant to come in or should we allow the applicant to stay as a permanent resident? And this statement is going to support that. No visa officer, excuse me, in his right senses is still going to deny you the green card when such statements are used to support chapter four. That is why it's very much imperative that you spend good time and have the patience and put in a lot of uh, skill work, okay, into drafting your letter of recommendations. Now let's continue. It says that the technology is poised to benefit various agricultural establishments in the United States to treat their wastewater on site to save surface and groundwater from contamination. New York could be the highest beneficiary as the state government has of plans to cite more biodiversity to avert food waste from landfills to energy generation. I therefore have no reservation that Mr. Social So is above the average peers with a similar education and training considering his contributions to research and knowledge so far. Now, one thing I want to also put across is that with this whole EB2 National Interest Revert petition, you want to show that you are above your peers, okay, of the same research field. If what you are doing is very common in the research field that everybody is doing, that doesn't make you unique. So you want to use certain phrase, certain statement to market yourself to show that you are even within your peers, you are above your peers, okay? And this is what this recommendation letter hope to achieve, all right? Uh, as an experienced researcher in microbiology, I can state on authority that Mr. Well, so and so line of research is quite new for which there is very little scientific knowledge and very few scientists working in this field. Once again, this is going to support low citation and low publication, okay? Uh, Hence, findings from his work will take some time to publish in reputable journals as more lab work is needed to streamline the algae treatment process. However, he has made the necessary effort to present his findings at conferences and larger scientific exhibitions, including recently open and uh, synergy and uh, open house on the company's website or uh, company sites. Uh, okay, so considering his research ability skills and communication and his contribution to the algae treatment industrial waste handling. I strongly recommend the United States to retain his talent to protect the environment and public health for which he is poised to develop further over time. You are welcome to contact me anytime for further clarification if needed. Yes, so that is a classic uh, uh, letter of recommendation once again in support of this applicant. So you have seen that it always follows a structure, okay? Address, salutation, heading, I play a recommender talk, talking about himself and how he came to know you, then talking about specific or specificities of your skills in the recommendation letter, which you wanted to be in there because you needed to support your petition at some point in time. Okay, so that is it. And you see that whenever you write it, be sure to also include maybe an email or a phone number that maybe the uh, recommender, <coughs> excuse me, that the recommender can be reached uh, most of the time, USCIS will not call these people. They don't have the time to do that. But it's just good that you put contact details of the recommender that they can be reached for any further question. It's just something normal and standard to do. Okay. So once again, we are through with our recommendation number two. <coughs> Sorry, we are through with our recommendation number two. And uh, after this recommendation, we have been able to find out that. Indeed, uh, uh, this is a very classic recommendation letter, a standard one. This is like a one page, two page, two, two, two and a half page. Okay, fine. Uh, okay, uh, so two, two, two and a half pages are quite okay. Now we are going to look at the third recommendation letter. The third recommendation letter is a dependent recommendation. In fact, it's the mentor of the applicant, okay? And the whole lot of things was, in fact, uh, if you look at this, Third recommendation letter we are going to look at that is the research mentor of the applicants and as a, as usual you expected that a lot was going to be said about the applicants so uh i took time to also make some comments in it which is going to help with 
looking at it. Of course, this one also followed the same structure, just that this one was a bit uh, lengthy because he was the main research mentor of the applicant. So page number two, page three, page four, almost like four pages, okay? Uh, because you wanted to throw a whole lot of in there because you have a lot to talk about the applicant because you directly supervise the applicant, okay? Which is somehow accepted and understandable, all right? So it follows the same thing, address, USCIS address, and the heading, this one good for the expert letter for EB2 National Interest Waiver Category, variations, okay? Uh, DSL, madam. And if you look at uh, this part, like I said, he said, I'm pleased to write this recommendation letter for Mr. Susan Zupertishin, permanent residence in the United States. My name is Dr. Something, an associate professor and director of the environmental science program at RIT. I hold a PhD in microbiology from the University of Mississippi. Before joining RIT, I served two postdoc positions at the Department of Chemistry and Biochemistry at Utah State University, uh, Biological Science at Boston University. My research expertise include this, wastewater remediation, microalgae, microbial degradation in pharmaceuticals, food waste to energy issues, food microbiology, biodegradation of toxic compounds. My expertise has attracted and resulted in many industrial collaborations and technology transfer, okay? Uh, I have known social and social since January 2016, and I'm familiar with his research in the area of microbiology, bioremediation of agricultural wastewater, and biomass conversion to biofuel, especially his work with treating biodigestive effluents from CH4 and CH Synergy LLC. In addition, as a program director for the environmental science program, I've personally mentored and I can attest to his research prowess among the scientific community. Okay, so this author was the uh, recommender actually writing about his qualifications. Okay. Now, if we go to uh, the second paragraph, most of the time, the second section, this one was uh, uh, the recommender also highlighted more technology transfer. Of course, uh, I don't want to read everything line by line, but it follows the same thing. And at some point, I'm going to comment a bit. Uh, okay, so this whole thing was talking about uh, expertise being invaluable through culturing. So this recommender took time to talk about detailed laboratory skills that the applicant have, especially under exceptional ability, the applicant will be talking about most of these skills, then he needs statement to support it. And your supervisor, of course, is the right person is going to talk about this. If you are somebody in a professional field, of course, your manager or your, 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 your direct supervisor is also in a position to write and talk about your professional skills and exceptional ability. Okay, so that is it. And you talk about, for instance, this boarding statement I wanted to talk about. He said he carried out 80% of the investigations using a novel scientific approach and spent countless hours in the lab to obtain the needed results to be reported to industries. Okay, so this statement is talking about, for instance, there was a whole lot of media publicity about our research, but the applicant's name was in India in the media publicity. It was just about the lab. Now, it was very much imperative that you insert some of these statements to show that if you carried out 80% of the work, then of course the publicity was just about your work. Okay, especially if you don't have your name in any blog or media post about your lab research or about your company or about your products, then of course some of these recommendations attributing much of the work to you is very important in that regard. Okay, now he said that he also fostered teamwork and mentored undergrads who interned in our lab, who interned in our lab with great energy and enthusiasm. Leadership skills coming in here too. Okay, so he spent past three years working on such products which sought source to transfer technology. It's important he used the term technology transfer, okay? To some agricultural plants in the US. He's utilized advanced research protocols to sample, characterize and treat wastewater from food and biogas plants. Results from his persistent research efforts were reported to our partner industries for implementation. Another boarding statement. It is worth to note that CH4 Biogas, for instance, is very excited with its findings and have begun implementation of the project on pilot scale, okay? They have also transferred same technology to sister facilities in Ohio and Genesee, national interest, okay? So not only resident in New York, Ohio, and also where? Uh, and Genesee, okay? So it goes above New York State to other states. And that is very important when you are documenting national interest. Don't restrict yourself to one state or one area. Okay. Now, biogas, the American Biogas Council 
has received an innovative award for coupling anaerobic digestion food waste and microalgae treatment for the digestive effluence. Okay, he said that the American Burgers Council received an innovation award, okay, for coupling this thing with it. Now, as several state government announced plans to explore biogas as the, at the sole renewable force, as the sole renewable energy for their state, the applicant's expertise will be needed to treat waste discharge from production plants, okay? Several U.S. waters are at risk of harmful algae blooms due to receiving untreated farm runoffs from high nitrogen and phosphorus loads. Therefore, the applicant's expertise in microbiology, microalgae remediation, will be precious in averting such ecological catastrophe, okay? So this is also going to talk about chapter four on balance. What would the U.S. risk if we don't give this guy the green card? That means, of course, ecological catastrophe. I talked, I made mention in my previous episodes that chapter four is actually used uh, you use such, some of these codes to convince the visa officer to make the decision in your favor, okay? Because some of these exigent situations and demanding and pressing situations actually allow the visa officer to sway in your favor and give you that green card. So that is it. That is the one of the great uh, importance of inserting such uh, codes in these recommendation letters. Now we are going to also look at this highlighted red text, which we wanted to draw attention to. Let's look at what this, this one is talking about here. So of course, like I said, this one particular one was talking about supporting chapter four statement, which is the unbalance. Uh, this one here is a statement which is going to support low citation and also novel research. Of course, yes, so it's very important we put it there. It's important to mention that very few researchers are actively pursuing microbiology technologies from food waste and AD, and even such researchers are still at their rudimentary stages of trying to unravel the history behind the ability of algae to remove pollutants from wastewater. This shows that you have advanced above your peers, okay? You have gone extra further, uh, extra further. They are still at the assessment stage. You are rather running on a pilot scale basis, which shows you are above your peers. So whenever you are drafting this green card petition, try to put some of these things to show that you have advanced and go further above your peers uh, to make you stand out as unique in your field. Now, so that is what all these things were just talking about, okay? Now, I also want to talk about this part. He said that these field projects will continue to depend on his presence for periodic overhaul to achieve their perfection, okay? It's also still chapter four statements that your presence will be continued needed in the United States to make this project a success. If the applicant should be kicked out of the United States, if the applicant should be allowed to leave, all these projects are going to start. This prog project's progress will be stalled and it will be a failure, okay? So we need his presence in the United States. And that is what this, uh, most of these statements are hoping to say. Also, before the commencement of the project, existing literature narrowly focused on treatment of paper mill and mining effluence, but he was able to extrapolate this idea and apply it to a wide range of agricultural wastewater, okay? Like egg processing waste, tofu waste, and all other food type wastewaters, okay? Now let's just look at this other section. Uh, this session, of course, is talking about media attention and publicity, okay? So due to the above successes work I've reported, coupled with the media attention it has received, our lab have been flooded with proposals for collaboration from plant owners and outside New York, which generate high volumes of wastewater. For instance, he has also made progress with treating egg processing wastewater from Kreha farms, with, with where microalgae remove pollutants from egg washing wastewater in relatively short period. Let's look at this boarding statement. It's that his success and extraordinary contributions. This statement is very strong. His success and extraordinary contributions to the field and him a special invitation from the CEO of RG Biomass Organization to present his research to the larger scientific community in Florida. Okay, yeah, so this was part of a conference invitation that our lab received to present our findings in a conference in Florida. Okay, so that is that. He said, another important use of microalgae is the conversion of oil and sugars. Conversion to oil and sugars accumulated in cell walls into biofuels. Okay, exceptional ability, you will need this statement. Okay, now, this whole thing was just talking about specific lab techniques that the applicant have. 
which of course is going to need it in exceptional ability next week when we start looking at exceptional ability, okay? How it's able to extract oil, how it's able to produce biodiesel, how it's able to assess microalgae for oil content using thin layer chromatography. These are all technical science skills that the applicant possess. Now I want us to also look at this session. Uh, the applicant has shown himself to be very resourceful and innovative researcher, and the relevance of his work is evident in the interest his work has garnered, both within the United States and overseas. So for instance, countries like Haiti and Kenya have expressed interest in the technology to treat industrial wastewater for irrigation purposes. Okay, so some companies in Kenya and Haiti were interested in exploring this technology to recycle wastewater and mainly use it for as irrigation water on farm fields. Now, due to his proud achievements from his home country and the demand for these skills, the Ghana Education Trust Fund supported his research with a funding of about 100,000 US dollars for two years. Okay, now, this was a funding to support the research. And as I point, exceptional ability, you'll be talking about grants and award you receive. And this statement will go a long way to support that. Okay, so that is it. It must be noted that because most of his work relates to treating waste from farms and industrial plants, the confidentiality and protection of our client's data is paramount to his research. Okay, such sensitivity, such sensitivity of industrial data limited his free ability to publish most aspects of his work without client's approval. This is another good reason for low citation and publications. Okay, also microbiology remediation research is relatively low, new in the field for which various research techniques must be tested and results verified before publishing to the wider scientific community. Okay, yeah. He has, however, gained numerous, given numerous uh, poster presentations and talks at conferences, both at the local and the national level, and manuscripts are being worked on now that he has completed his master's degree and has his thesis certified. Okay, yeah. So this is a supervisor who supervise the applicant, writing a whole lot to support the applicant. Uh, at some point in time, even if you cannot get from your supervisor, somebody who served on your thesis committee or your research committee is equally good as your supervisor. And it's very important. It's very important that you get such a recommendation that just to support your work if you can. Now, in summary, the RG Biomediation field is becoming more important to the US government and Mr. Social and Social Competence and Skills in this area are extraordinarily documented in his findings. Without these skills, US waters will face, yes, this statement again is also very strong for chapter four. Without these skills, US waters face the risk of extreme pollution, ecosystem surface uh, services will be greatly affected, and the United States might lose the fight of making renewable biofuels commercially viable to keep the growing threat of climate change and global warming. I therefore recommend the US to grant him residence to continue to reap the benefits from his expertise and do not hesitate to contact me for additional clarification at an email and a phone number, whatever it is. Okay, so this is also classic letter of recommendation as you can get. Okay, so now we have seen how you should draft it, certain words you should use, powerful words, phrases. Don't use just normal phrases, use extraordinary, exceptional, unique, powerful. Uh, uh and any kind of praising phrases you can use use it to present you in a very good way so that at the end you are going to get that green card for yourself okay so today we are going to end our episode here and we have gone through samples and we have really seen how these letters of recommendation are written especially by you the applicant you write it to yourself and look for people so if you compare all these three the length are not the same styling are not the same uh, phrases are not the same as you can see okay well some may have some common phrases in there but very few so please uh try to use some of these techniques to write your letter of recommendation and like i said if you need help always reach out to me uh i can be able to meet one-on-one -on, -one on your profile and also work on some recommendation letters i can even proofread your recommendation letters for you to make sure that you are presenting a very strong recommendation letter for yourself, which is going to do the magic for you. Uh, once again, my name is Daniel Aniniba, and I'm going to see you next week as we are going straight into chapter three to talk about exceptional abilities, okay? Exceptional abilities, 
whatever skill you have, whatever computer programs you can run, whatever IT skills, work experience skills. Uh, one person also asked that, as what point should you talk about internship in your uh, petition? You see, internship comes under work experience, okay? So especially with work experience, you want to, whenever you are developing work experience points into paragraph, begin with uh, the strongest ones, your work experience, paid work experience, then you can come to projects, then you can also end with internships you have done also, okay? So work experience actually come under internship. So uh, sorry, one of our uh, viewers who brought a comment, I forgot to address that in the Q&A work experience uh, internship comes under work experience and it comes under chapter three which is exceptional ability okay so take note of that uh see you next week uh enjoy yourself we love you all our cherished viewers and please share and subscribe if you have not done this as we are going to come your way with more interesting episodes and more tips and more strategies to make sure that you win that green card for yourself uh remember if you cannot explain your research to the u.s government don't expect a lawyer to do it any better for you uh enjoy yourself avoid crime and see you next week